Hello scientists, it's so good to see you again. Welcome back to room nine, our region's largest classroom. My name is Mrs. Stobbs and I teach kindergarten in the Maplewood Richmond Heights School District right here in St. Louis. And today we're going to do another science lesson for kindergartners and for preschoolers. But of course, learners of all ages are welcome to join me. So we're going to have so much fun today. And my friends, I'm outside on this beautiful fall day. Do you like to be outside? I bet you do. A lot of people like to be outside, especially on a sunny day like today. Why do you think people like to be out in the sun? Ooh, maybe it makes your skin feel nice and warm. I know my skin's feeling really warm. But sometimes, whenever we're out in the sun, we might need some things to protect us. I'm wearing sunglasses right now because the sun is really bright and it makes my eyes squint and it would be hard to see you. I also could wear a hat, right, to protect myself. And now I feel a little bit cooler being out here in the sun. But what if I wanted to make myself feel even cooler? Because you know what? The sun is really bright today and I am feeling a little bit hot. Where could I go to feel a little bit cooler? Hmm. Did you say go inside? Oh, you're right, I could go inside, but I want to stay outside. It's a beautiful fall day. So where could I go in this park to, to get a little bit cooler? Hmm. Well, you know what? I see that there is a big tree over here and it looks like there's a lot of shade. Do you think, do you think that that might be a good spot for me to go to get a little bit cooler? Let's test it out. Let's see. Hmm. Ooh. It is feeling a little bit cooler. Actually, you know what? I can take off my hat. I actually can even pull up my sunglasses and now I can see you a little bit better. Wow, it does. You know what? I feel so much cooler in the shade right now than under than I did out in the sun. Have you ever noticed that before? Have you ever felt cooler in the shade than maybe out in the sun? Maybe whenever you've been playing on the playground, you get a little bit hot and so then you go to a place in the shade. I wonder why that is, huh? Well, you know what friends? I just asked another question and we said that scientists ask questions all the time. My question is why is it cooler in the shade than it is out in the sun. And how can we find out that answer? Do you remember what scientists do to find out that answer after they ask a question? They read to find out information. They observe, which you know what, we already did. We observed it feels cooler. Then they might do a test and they also might talk to an expert. And after they find, found out their information, they write it down and they share with the world what they've learned. So my friends, we're going to do some of those things today. We already asked a question and we've observed that it's cooler in the, sun, in the shade than it was in the sun, but that made us ask even more questions. Why is it that way? Hmm. Well, you know what? We could do a test to see if our observations are correct. We could actually test to see if it really is cooler in the shade than in the sun. Do you think that might be something good to test? I do. And you know what I have in my pocket? I have a thermometer. Do you remember what we use thermometers for? We use them to measure the temperature or how hot or cold something is. And this is a perfect day to, in a perfect experiment to use a thermometer. So let's, I have some thermometers that I've had sitting out already, some in the sun and some in the shade. And we're going to see what the temperature says on the thermometer. We're going to read what it, what it says. And I know that the weather, the forecasters, weather forecasters, the meteorologists have said that it's 79 degrees right now in St. Louis. And we're going to see what our thermometers say. So let's go check the one out in the sun first. Let's go see what the temperature is in the sun. I have to put my sunglasses back on because it's so bright. Hmm. All right, I have two just to make sure. And oh my goodness, it says that it is almost 100 degrees in the sun. That's a lot hotter than 79 degrees, what the weather forecaster said it was going to be today. This says 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Oh my goodness. Well now, let's go back into the shade and compare. This thermometer, it says it's 70 degrees. 
So it is 70 degrees Fahrenheit with this thermometer, the one that was in the shade, and it was 100 degrees out in the sun. That is a really big difference. That is 30 degrees different, um, a difference of 30 degrees. So 70 degrees versus 100 degrees, that's a lot. Now, like I said, the weather forecasters said it was going to be about 80 degrees, 79 degrees today. So neither of these really matched. I wonder why. So you know what? Let's go back to our classroom and let's find out the answers, see if we can read a book and get more information to answer this question about why it's cooler in the shade than it is in the sun. All right, friends, we're back inside our classroom right now. So the sun's sunlight, the sunlight can't hit us anymore because we're inside, but we still had some questions that we needed to answer. We did our experiment outside and we learned that really truly it is cooler in the shade than in the sun. We learned that today it was a lot cooler in the shade than it is in the sun, but we're still wondering why. And remember we said that one way that scientists can find out answers, even after they've done tests, they still might have some more answer or more questions to ask, is that they look and read things that other scientists have written. And so we're going to read this book and it's called Earth and the Sun. And scientists helped the author write this book. The author had to research this book to give us some answers. So we're going to learn from other scientists. And this is a Bobby Kalman book, Earth and the Sun. Oh, says it again, Earth and the Sun. It's by Bobby Kalman and Kelly McGauley and it's published by the Crabtree Publishing Company, and they gave me permission to read this book to you. What is this? Do you guys remember? It's the table of contents, and it tells us all of the things that we're going to read. So we are going to learn about the earth and the sun. We're going to read a page that's called, What is the Sun? Oh, that's a good one. We're going to learn about day and night, hot and cold. Oh, I bet that might be where we want to go, hot and cold. We're also going to learn about the seasons. Wow, there's a lot in this book. Earth and the sun. The sun shines light onto earth. Without the sun's light, earth would be very dark. The sun also heats the earth. Oh, we learned that today, didn't we? Earth would be cold and frozen without the sun's heat. Without the sun's light and heat, there would be no life on earth. So we've talked about living things a few weeks ago. If we didn't have the sun, we wouldn't have any living things gifts from the sun. We love sunny days. Do you love sunny days? I sure do. The sun warms us and makes us feel good. We love to see the beautiful colors of flowers. We love to swim on hot summer days. Do you like to swim on a hot summer day? If you do, can you give me a swimming motion? Maybe you can even dive. Whoa! Dive into the pool. <laughs> and we love the food that we eat. Did you know that the sun gives us all of these gifts? So if we didn't have the sun, we wouldn't be able to go swimming on a hot summer day because it wouldn't be hot. And if we didn't have the sun, we wouldn't even have food. The sun gives us all of the foods that we eat. It also gives us colors. Do you, you like the rainbow? Do you like rainbows? If you do, then you better thank the sun for that. What is the sun? Oh, we're wondering about that. The sun is a star. Did you know that, that the sun is a star? It's kind of like the stars that you see up in the sky. It is like the stars that you see up in the sky, but why does it look bigger? Let's keep on reading. A star is a huge hot ball of gas that glows and gives us off heat. The sun is the closest star to earth. It is still very far away though. The sun is much bigger than earth is, but it looks small because it's so far away. And then down here it says, the sun is a medium-sized star. Some stars are bigger than the sun. Others are much smaller. We see the stars as tiny white lights in the night sky. So it said that the sun is actually a medium-sized star. So that means that there are other stars that are way bigger. But why do they just look like teeny tiny little dots in the sky at nighttime whenever the sun, we can see it and it's big, big, big. Well, what did our book say? It said that it, the sun is the closest star to earth. And whenever things are closer, they look bigger, even if they really aren't. So take your fingers like this and put it close to your eyeball. Now try to pinch my head. Can you pinch my head? You can, you can, you can probably squish my head right now so that you, can, you can't even see me. 
But if you came up to me and you tried to put your fingers on my head, oh, you wouldn't be able to pinch my head because your fingers are actually smaller, but whenever they're closer, they sure do look bigger. Even if I go like this, do my fingers look a lot bigger than my head? Yeah, they do. They really, really do. Pinch, pinch. But it's because whether it's, it looks that way because we're moving it closer or farther away. So the sun looks bigger to us than other stars because it's just closer to us, but it's still really, really, really far away from us. But it just means that the other stars are really, 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 really far away from us. Okay, let's keep on reading. The solar system. The sun is at the center of our solar system. The solar system is made up of the sun, planets, moons, and other things that float in space. The sun does not move. The planets orbit or move in circles around the sun. Earth is a planet. It is the third closest planet to the sun. So did you hear that? The sun never ever moves. Whenever we look at the sun, sometimes it looks like it moves in the sky. But do you know what? The sun is staying still. We're the ones moving. The earth is moving. The earth spins around, but it also goes around the sun like this. It goes around like this, but it also spins like, like that too. And that makes it look like the sun is moving. And here's a picture of the planets in our solar system. So we have the sun in the middle, and then we have Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and then Pluto. And Pluto used to be called a planet. Now scientists kind of go back and forth on whether or not we should call it a planet because it's really tiny. It's not this tiny, it's still huge, but compared to the other planets, it's a lot smaller. And so some scientists say it's too small to be a planet, but other scientists say, no, I think it might be a planet. And so scientists have to figure that out. Day and night. As Earth travels around the sun, it slowly turns in circles. Oh, that's what I said. So as it goes around the sun, it also goes like this. It takes one day for the Earth to go around in one full circle. So do you think it goes slower than what I just did? Oh yeah, it takes 24 hours for it to do that. For about half of the day, the part of the Earth where you live faces the sun. When the earth faces the sun, it is daylight in your part of the world. For the other half of the day, the part of the earth where you live faces away from the sun. When earth faces away from the sun, it is nighttime in your part of the world. So that's why we have day or night, depending on where the earth is facing. Each day has a nighttime and a daytime. Night follows day and day follows night. When something repeats, that's called a pattern. How many times does the night and day pattern repeat in a week? Do you know how many days are in a week? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Sunday again. Oops, I did too many times because I said Sunday again. So seven, <laughs> silly Mrs. Dobbs. There are seven days in a week and it repeats over and over and over. During the day, there's a lot of light. The sun gives the earth light. But at night, the sun does not light this part of the earth. So you have to turn on light so you can see. And during the day, we see the sun. What do we see at night? We see the moon. Hot and cold. Oh, this is kind of what we were wondering about. Not all parts of earth get the same amount of sunlight. So there are parts of the, this is what our earth looks like, but it's actually a ball. It's round. And there's a North Pole and a South Pole. Areas near the North Pole and the South Pole never get a lot of sunlight. The North Pole is at the top of the Earth and the South Pole is at the bottom of the Earth. These parts of the Earth are always cold. So polar bears, they live at the North Pole and penguins, they live at the South Pole. Polars and, polar bears and penguins don't live in the same part of the world at all unless they're at a zoo together, but they both live where it's cold because the North Pole is really cold and the South Pole is really cold. The middle part of the Earth is called the equator. The equator gets a lot of sunlight all year. The area near the equator is always hot and sunny. So that part of the Earth is really warm. So right in the middle is really warm. And St. Louis is kind of between the equator and the North Pole. It's probably about halfway. I mean, it's not exactly halfway, but it's kind of in the middle. And that shows 
that shows us though that we have some times of the er, of the world or sometimes of the year that are really hot and sometimes of the year that are really cold. When the sun rises and sets, when the sun rises and sets or goes down, it is low in the sky. This picture shows a sunset. The sun will soon be gone and it will be nighttime. Have you ever watched the sunset before or maybe the sunrise? It's really pretty. The four seasons. So wow, did you know that the sun even controls why we have seasons? Oh my goodness. There is a big area on Earth between the North Pole and the Equator. There's also a big area between the South Pole and the Equator. These areas are not always hot or cold. They have four seasons. The seasons are, do you know, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. A season is a period of time that has certain weather and temperatures. Temperature measures how hot or cold something is, and we talked about that already. In the spring, the weather is warm and rainy. Flowers bloom and baby animals are born. Summer days are hot and sunny. Children have fun swimming. In the autumn, the weather is cool and cloudy. Leaves fall off the trees and winter is coming soon. Winter days are cold. Children wear warm clothes. In some places, they play in the snow. Do you know what season it is right now here in St. Louis? Right now, it is the autumn or the fall. The leaves are falling off of the trees and it's starting to get a little chilly. Today was pretty warm, but there are there have been some cool days already. And so the fall is kind of neat like that because you might have some warm days and then some cool days. A tilted planet. Earth is tilted. Did you know that? Whenever Earth is going around in space, it doesn't stand up straight like this. It tilts to the side. When something is tilted, it is not straight up and down. As Earth travels around the sun, different parts of the Earth are tilted toward the sun at different times. The tilt of the Earth causes the seasons to change. Isn't that cool? So the reason why, the, why we have different seasons is because the Earth is tilted. And it depends on where the sun is hitting it because what season do you think the sun is hitting our part of the Earth the hardest? At the summertime because it's so, so, so hot and the sun is just hitting us really hard. The sunlight is just coming right to us. But when do you think the earth is tilted away from the sun for us? The winter time, right? Good job. Friends, we talked about living and non-living things. And did you know that food comes from sunlight? Many plants go in the spring, grow in the spring and summer. The weather is warm and there is plenty of sunlight. Plants use sunlight to make their own food. Using sunlight to make food is called photosynthesis. Can you say that? Photosynthesis. Photo? Synthesis. Photosynthesis. Plants take in sunlight through a green color in their leaves or stems. The green color is called chlorophyll. Plants use air and water to make food from sunlight. Plants take in air through tiny holes in their leaves. They take in water through the, what are those called? We learned about that a few weeks ago, through roots. Roots are the underground plants, parts of the plants and plants breathe through small holes in their leaves called stomata. Plants need sunlight to make food. Plants take in water from the soil and um, plants use part of the air called carbon dioxide. Less sunshine. Plants look different in different seasons. Trees have bright green leaves in the spring and summer. In autumn, the leaves of the trees are red, orange, and yellow. Why do the leaves change color? Hmm. Have you guys noticed the leaves changing color? I hope you have because it's beautiful. But are you wondering why? It has to do with sunlight and with the seasons. Green makes food. The leaves of the trees change color because of the sun. In spring and summer, the sun shines for many hours each day. Trees can make a lot of food in their leaves. They use chlorophyll, their green color, to make food. But then in autumn, there are fewer hours of sunlight each day. Trees cannot make as much food. Without food, the green color in the leaves starts to fade. And then the red and yellow colors in the leaves show through. So the green color in this leaf is fading. And what colors do you see? I see some yellow and some red. And without food, leaves die by the end of autumn. When the leaves die, they fall off the trees. Do you like to jump in leaves? Have you ever raked a big pile of leaves and then jumped in it? It's really fun. And what do leaves sound like? 
they sound really crunchy, right? When you step on them, I like to step on really crunchy leaves. <gasps> Did you know that the sun even affects how animals behave? It does. The lives of animals also change when there is less sunlight. In winter, the days are short and dark. It is cold outside. Some animals cannot keep warm. These animals sleep through most of the winter. Before they go to sleep, the animals gather food. Some animals also gather soft grasses and leaves to make warm beds. And other animals, what do birds do? Some birds, they migrate or fly south. Some animals do not sleep through the winter. They migrate or move to warmer places with more sunshine. Many birds fly south in autumn. They return home in spring. Shorter days. Sunlight tells animals when to prepare for sleep or when to leave their homes. In autumn, the days slowly start getting shorter. When days get shorter, they also get colder. Shorter, colder days tell the animals that winter is coming. Isn't that cool that animals know that? And you know what? We're going to save the next few pages for our next lesson because we have some really cool stuff to learn about next week about the sun too. But my friends, now we know that the sun is a big, big ball of really hot gas and it shoots off heat and light towards the sun. And sometimes it's giving us a lot of heat and light, but sometimes the earth is tilted away and we don't get as much heat and light. And that's what makes the seasons. But friends, I bet that is why it is hotter in the sun than it is in the shade because the sunlight is hitting us straight on. Where if we're in the shade, we have something protecting us and covering us from the sun's heat and light. Now, my friends, I have some other fun experiments that I want to do back outside in the sunlight because now I know a little bit more about how the sun works and how it heats things up. I was also thinking of things that I noticed when I was outside in the sun. I noticed that sometimes I feel hotter or colder based on what I'm wearing or where I'm playing. So let's go back outside and see if we can figure out some of these cool things about the sun and we'll do a few more experiments. So let's go. All right, so my friends, another thing that I've noticed out whenever I've been out in the sun is whenever I'm wearing a lighter colored shirt like I am today, I feel a little bit cooler. But if I'm wearing a really dark shirt like a black or a navy blue shirt, I feel really hot. So that is something that I've observed, but I wanted to do a test to see if my observations were correct. So I could actually get some temperatures to see if it really is hotter whenever you wear a dark colored shirt versus a light colored shirt. So I have a test set out, an experiment. I have one of my navy blue shirts over there and I have a white shirt over here. And I also put a thermometer inside each of the shirts. So we're going to see what the temperature says and see if my hypothesis, my guess of, I think it's going to be a bigger number under the navy blue shirt will be correct. So let's see. So under the white shirt, it is about 90 degrees, 90 degrees under this white shirt. So I'm wondering if it's going to be a little bit warmer underneath this navy blue shirt. So that's still pretty hot, but I'm going to pull this out. Ooh, it's about 97 degrees in this blue shirt, this navy blue shirt. And my friends, you know why? You know why that's why it's like that? It's because dark colored shirts and clothes and just dark colors in general, they absorb the sun's energy. They absorb the heat and the light that's coming from the sun. Where light colored shirts, they reflect it away. So if you want to be a little bit cooler on a hot day, you probably want to wear a lighter colored shirt. All right, so my friends, we've done a few experiments now to test out the power of the sun and how hot the sun can make different things and how we can also stay a little bit cooler. But I have another um, experiment that I wanted to do based on another observation that I've had. I've observed whenever I've been outside that it always feels hotter on the concrete than it does in the grass. So if you're playing out in a field, it feels a lot cooler than if you're playing on a sidewalk. And I wanted to do an experiment to see if my observations were correct. So I have three thermometers set out here, one in the grass, one on this light colored concrete, and then one on this really dark black top. And I wanted to see what it said, the thermo or what it said the temperature was of these different surfaces. So I'm going to test out the grass first. And the grass, it's about 95 degrees in the grass right now. That's still really warm because the sun's energy is hitting it really hard right now. But if I look at the concrete, 
the concrete, ooh, is it at 100 degrees Fahrenheit? That is five degrees warmer than in the grass. But now I want to also look at this dark concrete. And think about what we learned about the t-shirt experiment that we just did. The darker t-shirt was a lot warmer than the lighter t-shirt. So do you think this is going to be even warmer? My hypothesis is that it will be. So I'm going to pull this up. Oh my goodness, this is actually, it's at the top of the thermometer. The thermometer goes up to 120 degrees and that's where it is. So it might even be hotter than this. 120 degrees, that is so much warmer than what was on the grass and what was on this light colored concrete. And again, the reason why is because the concrete absorbs all of the sun's energy, all of the heat and the light, and it just holds on to it, holds on to it. Where the grass, it absorbs it, but what do we learn about plants and how they use the sun? They use the sun's energy to make food. So it turns the sun's energy into something else besides just heat. And that way, the grass is not as hot as it is on the concrete. Wow. So my friends, we've learned a lot today about the sun. And we've learned a lot about how we can be comfortable whenever we're in the sun. So I want you to think about, if it was a really chilly day, but it was sunny, where would you want to play? Hmm. And what would you want to wear? I think that I would like to play maybe on something like this, on the blacktop, and I'd want to wear really dark clothes, right? And also probably a sweater too, to be a little bit warmer. But what if it was a really hot, sunny day, like maybe in the summertime? Where would you want to play? And what would you want to wear? I think I'd like to play out in a field somewhere and also in the shade, maybe in the shade, and I would like to wear really light colored clothes. So my friends, it's important for us to know these things so we can be comfortable whenever we're outside. So science is fun, but it's also something that can help us too. My friends, I hope that you have time this week to do some of your own experiments. Maybe observe the weather around you and see where you feel hot and cold in your backyard or in your front yard. And I hope you do a lot of learning this week. I'll see you next week right here on Room 9. Bye! Teaching in Room 9 is made possible with support of Bank of America, Dana Brown Charitable Trust, Emerson, and viewers like you.